Basic Burst Block Part 2. That's right. Welcome back to Making It Fun. I am your host, Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, and I'm super excited to tell you that yes, the free motion machine quilting certainly did work out, but the next part of this video, you're going to see this is just a quilt top, and I'm going to take you through the three phases of machine quilting I did in this awesome project. Let's get started. <music> I thought I might as well describe what I've done for you because I know that there are a lot of new quilters enjoying today's video. So when I base my quilts, I make a backing that is generally two to four inches larger than the quilt top all the way around. So if this was, let's call it 60, I've made at least a 66 to 68 inch square backing. Then the other thing I love to do is I use these clips or clamps and I basically had just clipped the backing blue fabric to the edge of the table and I space out my clamps and I pull my backing nice and taut because you want your backing taut to help prevent as many ripples as possible when you're doing your free motion machine quilting, right? Then I float over my Hobbs batting. I absolutely love the Hobbs batting. Yes, they are one of the sponsors of Michael Miller's Ambassadors, which is so cool because I'd always used their product. I didn't have to change supplies, it was rad. So I love their 80-20. It's an 80% cotton, 20% poly, and it works fantastic. Once that's done, then I place down my quilt top in the center and I start working the center out with both my hands and or I'll bring in the iron and smooth it all out before I start dropping in those little curved safety pins. The curved safety pins are generally a shock a distance apart, which was perfect because these are also the 10 inch squares. I guess I'm a 10 inch shaka. Take that as you will. <laughs> so I lay them out in a very even grid pattern so I know where to expect them when I'm over there and I keep pointing over there because on the other side, what you can't see right now is where the quilting machine is at, where we're going to go in just a few moments. I want to know where the pins are as I'm free motioning around the design. For this particular design though, I am going to start as all good quilters should in the center or near the center. I want to free motion like you see the quilting design in this background here where I'm just going to echo quilt to start with the perimeter of the patchwork. I want to do something slightly different for the center to give a little extra exaggeration to go into phase two of the machine quilting. So what we're going to do for the center only is we're going to come up and we're going to go around as a star or a plus sign where every other place will simply just go around and complete a triangle or even in the burst, there'll be the kite shapes within. I want to fill in extra quilting in all of the triangle spaces, which should then give our kite shapes the ability to lift or loft up. That's one of the tricks in machine quilting. I think that will be the stopping point, but because you're watching the beginning of the video with safety pins versus thread, I'm not sure. We might go into a phase three and I'll explain that if we get there. If not, we'll put binding on it and call it a finished tutorial. So at this moment, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to move the cameras and the lights and everything to the other side of the studio because we have not finished the remodel, but I don't want you to miss out. So excuse the mess. It'll be worth it. I'll see you back here in just a second. No, I'll see you over there in just a second. Okay, I've bounced to the other side of the room. I won't tell you about the disaster that happened when I dropped the camera in the setup, but that's okay because I was able to fix it and I'm so excited, but it has been a lot longer than you think it's been since we were just discussing the quilt, but now it's over here. This is awesome. Okay, so we are now moved over here. Don't mind the mess. We're working on the studio, but we're more importantly, we're gonna work on this quilt. So I'm gonna take this camera right now and we're gonna mount it right over here. That, okay. Grabbing my chair. As I said, what I want to do is I want to start in the very center in this big gray X formation and we're just going to do some echo quilting using the foot. Now I pre-tested the machine last night for a free motion setup, but in basically what I'm calling uh, kind of a stitch in the ditch style or just echo quilting style. I should be just fine. We'll see what happens. Um, it's new to me and the machine is very, very fast and very powerful. So I'm going to try to take it slowly and try to make this work out nicely here. But hey, let's learn together. That's my formula here. So what I want to do is I want to do a needle down and a needle back up because I am quilting and I'm going to take a couple stitches in place. And now I'm just using the edge of my foot 
So I'm just using a needle down format. And another thing you should all know as quilters, you are always welcome to rotate the quilt project as long as the needle's not moving. So for me, it's gonna be easier if I just now basically rotate the weight of the quilt so it's almost like I'm doing the patchwork because it is like uh, straight stitching right now in that manner. Just following my seam allowances to create a really nice basic outline. And then moving the weight again so I'm not getting hung up on it. One of the things I love about this style of quilting in the preliminary round is what I'm doing is I'm actually anchoring all of the quilt so that I can get rid of the safety pins and then I can quilt wherever I want because it's, it's quilted and so I'm not worrying about the batting and things shifting all around. I've really already kind of finished the work and or I can use that batting and control it so that I can put loft where I want and pucker, oh, pucker where I want. I'm gonna finish right to that spot where we started this perimeter, I'm gonna do a few more stitches in place. And now this particular machine has a thread cut in the heel system of the foot control. So I'm just gonna use that today instead of bringing the threads back up as I've maybe shown you in some of my other videos. Partly again, I'm using this quilt to learn how to use my new machine. I, like I said, I love to learn together. Now, where we're at right here, we've gone around the X from the center of the project, and I probably won't ever do any more stitching in there. I wanna also do the exact same echo quilting on the other side of the seams. We're gonna now go around every seam as its own patchwork. So these diamond, excuse me, these triangles, and then these kite shapes will independently be quilted. And so I'm gonna start from where I was and continue to move in each direction out towards the edges. So center out like all good quilters. So a real easy way to do that now is just to bounce over to the other side. I am going to go ahead and hold on to my needle thread as I begin setting this machine into position. And now we're just gonna go ahead and do that same free motion style, stitch in the ditch, cause this is all phase one. We're just gonna stitch in the ditch everything for phase one, and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna backfill all of the triangles to make all of our kite shapes lift up more. So at this triangle, I'm gonna make a sharp corner. I'm gonna head to this corner, and now this is another awesome teachable moment. Oh, come on, stay down. We're heading towards a safety pin. I don't wanna get this close to the safety pin. I don't need it there any longer, so I'm gonna pull it out. I'm making sure I only have my layers of quilting I want here. And now I'm gonna to come to that sharp corner. So I will go ahead and do each triangle working from my center out, and then each diamond working from the center out until they're all done. And then we're gonna come back in and start phase two together. <laughs> but I have a hard time talking and quilting at the same time. I know, Rob Appel, he loves to talk and he loves to quilt, but no, he doesn't do it great at the same time. So let me focus on this for a few minutes and I'll get back to you with that phase two. Ah, mid-afternoon coffee break. Perfect time to bring you all back into where I'm at in the progress of the quilting. So yes, I have completed all of the perimeter stitching, all of that stitch in the ditch style work I was trying to do. Now, I have started in, in the center four blocks with a dark green thread doing my design I call, well, it's not my design, but it's a motif I call Rainbows Gone Wild. So it's a series of swirls back and forth. And then I um, changed into a lighter color thread because I wanted that deep darkness in the center. I'm moving to a medium green as I move out. And now I'm only quilting in the triangle sections. I'm not quilting in the kite shape or the burst block. 
anymore. So I'm gonna slide my machine girls gloves back on. Um, I have used these my entire quilting career, although I don't think I was wearing them earlier in the video because uh, I was running the cameras quickly and all that stuff. But we're gonna do a bunch of machine quilting here. So I'm just gonna slide these on because I love them. So try to pick a section that'll be fairly easy for us to see what we're working on. And here I've got this light green thread. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, um, oh, and I've turned off the thread cutting system now in the machine so that I can do what I prefer to do with my machine quilting, which is uh, hang on to my needle thread. I'm gonna do a single stitch down, single stitch up, pull up on this. And now I've got the bobbin thread in my hand as well over here. I'm gonna take a few stitches in place to secure that. And now I'm gonna begin my motif. Once I get to a spot where I'm out of the way of the um, scissor, I can come in here and cut those threads so that they're not in the way of the rest of my design because they're distracting. It's wide and then it comes wide back there, but it was actually narrow where you left off wide. And then you start another arc to begin the design over and then you can use that arc to go in either direction. I will also use a series of circles if I ever need to change direction. And you don't always have to do three bounces or three touches, but I, for, I find that it actually gives the best look. And now it seems to be very forgiving as well. It's a nice open design. And because I've gone to a medium thread, I did that to open up the design and open up the color. Here's something you may or may not know. Obviously you can't feel what's happening right now, but the weight of the quilt is starting to come off the edge of the table. So I'm stopping, I have my needle in the down position and I'm gonna grab the weight of the quilt. And even though it might be in the camera's way right here, it's way better for me to move it so that I'm always what we calling fluffing and stuffing, fluffing and stuffing. And we're just doing a basic design that doesn't require a ton of effort or a ton of concentration, just as a backfill really quick. Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple more stitches at the end of the design. I'm gonna raise my needle up and my presser foot up to open up my tension system. I come over here and as I pull up and snip on the twist that you see in the thread, I should have also cut my bobbin thread. And that's important because then as I come back over here to start that same motif all over, but in a new section, so I'm starting over in each section, tying on and starting and stopping. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drop that uh, needle and back up. Hey, I'm getting pretty smooth with my new machine too. Stitch those in place, stitch, stitch, stitch. Come around to secure, get away from the design. back and forth and it kind of makes a wide side and then a narrow side wide side and then a narrow use loops circles arcs whatever you need to switch directions to stitch back in place, prepare to cut again. And so that means bring my presser foot up, my needle up, presser foot up, slide, pull up. Then find a new block that was right by one of the ones you stitched on from the center out and begin back filling in that triangle section, leaving your kite or burst section open again. So needle down, needle up, Start it over. And when I'm doing a basic quilt like this, I like this kind of machine quilting because I don't have to keep changing my design and changing what I'm doing. I know that's part of the creative process, 
but sometimes we have to get it done. And I said this would be a get it done style quilt, and so I didn't want to overcomplicate the machine quilting. So whatever you're doing for your back filling, you're gonna do it in all your squares. You have 36 of them. So make sure you don't overdo it or over exaggerate something because then you might spend a lot of time doing that design. Okay, back, forth, back, change direction. So whenever I take a break and I'm not drinking coffee, I do throw the quilt out on my table in the middle of the room so I can check for any kind of knots, threads going anywhere, look at the motif, get an overall feel for how the quilting is affecting the actual project or the quilt itself. So what we have found here so far is, just as a quick reminder, uh, the perimeter quilting is done. I've done some dark green thread in these four squares, the triangles, I should say, of these four squares to make it a little darker. I've done the green same motif swirly thing here, but I did not do it in the corner blocks because I'm starting to feel like it's too much of the same design. So what I now wanna do is I wanna deploy a, even a simpler design that back and forth kind of looks like a, uh, an open figure eight, if we will, and we're gonna run it in the same direction, this diagonal as the lines are heading out. And I'll do that in the corner blocks and then all of the outside perimeter blocks. So all of the outer edges. So we're about halfway done with the actual machine quilting block count wise. I'm gonna deploy a third design right now to make a little more interest in the quilting. Let me bounce you over to sewing machine so you can watch me do it. This has been a lot of fun, hasn't it? Wow, I love machine quilting. Okay, so like I said, we're just gonna dive right back in here, get that presser foot all the way up in the air, and I'm gonna start in on the corners of the second row and do a real basic open figure eight. I'm gonna make sure that my lines stay on the diagonal of the block itself. Start up in the corner here. Stitch, 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 and we're just gonna come down and do that first twist. So you kind of come towards the edge and then you go back up over your line on this one, towards the edge, back up over your line. And the, probably the only spots that are gonna matter is as you come into the corners, just to make it look pretty. Whoops, peekaboo. And let your loops get a little smaller as you approach your corner. Well, I certainly love the way this new motif is going, but I don't want you to ever feel like you have to quilt as fast as I quilt. I have been doing this for literally like 15 years. I love machine quilting and I have the power tools to do so. So if you're using a standard domestic machine at home and your machine isn't going that fast, don't push it. When I'm running a smaller machine or a home um, lightweight domestic machine, I do go much slower because then it's just not set up. And that's when you start to get all kinds of terrible stitch quality and stuff. But here on my new Juki, it is definitely built for this and I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. Thank you. 
and no doubt about it, this motif helps me get these triangles done in a hurry. And what's so funny is guess what I've got to go do now? I'm gonna go check the oven because it's one more Costco lasagna night. And if you think that Juki sent me a bunch of frozen lasagnas to go with the sewing machine, that almost sounds correct because every time I'm sitting here on this sewing machine, I'm talking about my frozen lasagnas from Costco. It's only because I don't want to cook tonight, man. I've just been playing and playing and playing all day. So I'm gonna go check the lasagna, come back and finish this out and show you how it's all come together in just a few moments once I have all of this stitching down. So I uh, better get to the oven. I think I hear the timer beeping in the background. That's a trick right there. Okay, timer set, 20 more minutes, that cheese will brown. That means I can finish several more of those triangles. Let's get back into the studio. Needle up, foot up, scissors handy. Whoo, I am hungry for that lasagna. There it is, you can see all of the machine quilting is finished and I even took a moment to put the binding on too. Don't worry, I didn't forget about you. I have a whole nother tutorial just on putting the binding that will be out any moment now. Don't rush me, you're still working on the quilting anyways. Plus, this was a super fun, super simple way for me to get familiar with that new Juki J150 that I absolutely love. Thanks for following along. I know the studio was a mess on that side of the room, but hey, not only are we making it fun, but we are also making it real right here. See you next time. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another helping of fun.